was ghetto. It was ghetto. It was ghetto. Can't make this up. Can't make this up. Morning of my wedding. She texts me at 5 a.m. talking about working on my energy, cleaning up, I'm taking care of by myself and me. Drinking coffee, take a sip, they say I'm sparkling. Manifest that write it down, you know it's happening. What up, beauty gang? Mm. It's just a lot going on with me. As y'all could tell by the title, I'm already hopping on here to talk about some ghetto experiences with y'all, right? There's more ghetto experiences that have currently happened to me today, like present day. Um, but it's okay, we move. We're gonna make it past it. I'm happy to be with my beauty gang. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I don't even got my like a wine set up and stuff going on. It's cool though, because I just want to get this video out to you guys. Honestly, that was another ghetto situation that happened. I thought I was going to get a video approved to go up today, but yeah, the video didn't get approved. Brand once more time. So here I am trying to make sure I stay on my consistency train with you guys. So hopefully I get this up to you guys and um, hopefully it's not too late by the time I get this up to you guys. My dookie braids are dookieing. Is this on focus? Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually take down my hair. I really could use some self-care, so yeah. <sighs> Let's get into this game. All right, so on today's ghetto operations, as y'all can tell by the title, I am going to be telling you guys about my wedding hairstylist situation gone wrong. My wedding hairstylist basically almost ruined my entire wedding. Thankfully, nothing but good vibes, positive energy surrounding us that day other than this situation. So the day was still beautiful and you know, God made everything work out, but the ghetto. I will not be disclosing any of the hairstylist information or anything. I actually intentionally did not tag them in the wedding content that I recently posted on Instagram or we kind of recently posted on Instagram because they certainly aren't highly recommended by me. You're about to find out because I got receipts and everything as to why and I just don't feel like they deserve to be credited in our vendor list of the people that helped us accomplish such a special day in our lives because she real life almost fucked our whole operation up with her ghetto operations. And, and, and the crazy thing is y'all, a lot of y'all know, I don't um let people touch my hair. The only time people touch my hair though is braided, faux locks, that's really it, like cornrows, French braids, that type of stuff. And then um, it's rare, but <laughs> This is probably the last time, to be honest, because of this reason, or it won't be for a very long time if, uh, until I find somebody truly reliable, but on the wig tip. I've only gotten my hair done by like a wig hairstylist twice. One was for my 26th birthday, and I did a late night then session some years ago on that because she basically scanned me out of $1,000. Guess who just tried to do the same thing? On your girl. These hairstylists out here are frustrating. And I know a lot of you guys can relate because in the last video vent session that I kind of had about a hairstylist, a lot of people were saying they've had similar experiences. I even have girlfriends, cousins, family members that just have trash ass experiences with hairstylists. Even random strangers I'll see on social media. Honestly, just that industry, I don't wanna generalize because I think, I think I haven't experienced them really, but I think there's a select few handful of professional, timely, considerate, just nice, good, positive vibes hairstylists. I don't know who they are. But fingers crossed, I do want to believe in my heart and soul that there are a select few and that this is not the masses. But I will say it's the majority. I just believe that because I've just heard too many horror stories, experiences, and, it, and it's frustrating because you spend so much time, like your hair is a form of an investment. And when the person that you're giving this money to as you're investing in yourself, when you don't get that service and that quality that you, you're paying good money, it's just, the experience is just very frustrating. Let's get into it. So I have receipts and whatnot. Let me pull them up, matter of fact. So Y'all really understand how ridiculous this situation became. And, and you know what? 
the, I will have to take partial accountability on the fact that there was red flags from the beginning, I would say, that I like either ignored or I just try to be like a nice person that tries to support black businesses, especially black women. I will always try to put my black dollar in a black business before anywhere else. And if the business is good, I'm going to ride with them. I'm not even going to look elsewhere. That's why y'all see the same makeup artists with me. That's why you see that I use the same decor people. Picnics in the Shy. They did my bridal suite. They did our engagement party. They did our Valentine's Day and seven year anniversary shoot. They did our picnic. Like I rock with the same black businesses that give me the quality and professionalism that I want and expect. So the people that I see stick with are people that are high quality, deliver all the time, love working with them, good energy, positive vibes. Anyway, so where do we start? Well, first and foremost, I found this hairstylist on Instagram. I was debating for a while what my wedding hairstyle was going to be. Y'all know that's kind of like one of the biggest deals of the day. Next in line, at least for me, other than my dress, the same level was my hair. That's Everybody's going to be looking at me, you know, you know a lot of uh supporters were wanting me to rock my natural hair wanting and expecting me to rock my natural hair and i obviously did give it thought but also natural hair let's be real you can't always guarantee its greatness sometimes i love my natural hair and it's actually a big reason why i made sure to incorporate it during my wedding journey like my batch trip i gave high puff i gave low sleek puff i gave hair out i rocked my natural hair and then my honeymoon in Jamaica, I made sure I rocked my natural hair for that too, just because I, I, it was a rarity to see um, a black woman, at least for me, I couldn't really find much black women content um, during the wedding process of them rocking their natural hair. And even like um, from the wedding tip, that was a rarity to find too. But I just personally that day didn't want to feel overwhelmed with like doing my hair. If it doesn't, the twist out doesn't come out right. We know, y'all know about that phrase. We were talking about that in my recent reacting to natural hair TikToks video, um, like why I'm scared of flexi rods, for example, because I just, it's not a guarantee for me that it's going to come out great. I just didn't want that type of pressure during my wedding day. So that is kind of what like led me to be like, I'm going to put this in somebody else's hands. I have a lot else to work on and figure out that day. So I decided I wanted to get a wig because also I wanted to do multiple hairstyles during my wedding because I knew I was going to do multiple looks. So my ceremony look was different from my reception look. And then I had my first reception look was different from my second reception look. I did a lot. I was a bride that did Zemos and it would have worked flawlessly if this did not mess up the entire timeline of the day but okay I'm rushing into things so anyway yes find a hairstylist I, I scoped out a few different hairstylists tried to reach out in the DMs I ended up going uh, with her because her pictures because that's the thing too finding a hairstylist that doesn't have filtered pictures a wig hairstylist it's like almost non-existent i hope you guys know these videos and reels and pictures that they are posting are most of them are highly edited either have a filter it's some type of mask to them they're not like you know the what lace thing some of the time you can't see the lace because they are literally they filtered it out they smoothed it out they faked the shit. So anyway, I didn't get that vibe from her page. The pictures and research that I saw, I ended up liking it. I was like, okay, she seemed like a pretty solid choice. Started communication through DMs. Go ahead and screen record so you guys can literally have this exp oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can screen record because I'm again not trying to show the person's information or anything. I'm not trying to create no hate train, but this is my experience. This is what has literally happened to me. So I have the right to talk about it. All right. So as you can see, August, I reached out. I said, hey, love, do you travel slash do weddings? Hey, love, I do. I said, okay, dope. Are you available? Because I wanted her to do my bridal shower shower um hair as well as the wedding. If the, bri the bridal shower was really a test run, right? So it was like... I shouldn't commit to just having a hairstylist for the wedding day and never even getting to experience if they're actually good at what they do. So I wanted to use her for both and ask how much you charge. Yeah, I'll be available. Whose hair am I doing? The bride, brides, and blah, blah, blah. It was just me. What style? I said at the moment, it's just me. Um, depending on pricing, it was possibly going to be my mom. We didn't end up doing that. Thank Thankfully. 
because that wouldn't have worked. I said I'd like my bridal shower look to be voila. So as you guys saw, that was what my bridal shower hairstyle ended up turning out to be. And then I said for my wedding ceremony, something like this, which is kind of what it ended up turning out to be. I said not this color though. Then for the reception, I'd be representing my Nigerian culture. So my hair would be something like this. Um, so it was the Gile or Gile. G-E-L-E. -E. My Nigerian sisters, if you could comment below like how I'm supposed to say it, because I've heard it said a few different times and I don't want to mess that up. But yeah, I was just showing her my ceremony hairstyle that I wanted, my reception hairstyle that I wanted, hairstyle, because again, I had the gile on. And then this was the final look that I thought I wanted for my reception look, just my hair down. I said, okay, I need to fly in Chicago on the 27th to do your hair that morning, afternoon, or night. I touch it up the next morning, the 28th, so I'd like to fly out that evening. You would have to take care of my flight and stay. The balance for the wig and style would be 1200 That's for the bridal shower. The ceremony, three styles, one wig, and work a deal. Oh, so she, okay, that's why we agreed on the two wigs thing. One for the bridal shower, one for the wedding. Ceremony, three styles, one wig. I can work a deal of 1800 Apologies for the quality in advance. I'm in the middle of trying to quickly edit this to you guys, and I forgot to mention during this part that I actually ended up not going with that uh, three-in-one thing. I was like, okay, you're gonna charge me eight just to put my hair in a ponytail with a gile and to just let my hair down and add some little curls and at the end it's cool I'm gonna do it myself which I ended up doing at the wedding so I really just paid her for the one hairstyle the updo so it ended up being the same price as that first bridal shower hairstyle the 1200 all right let's get back uh, whenever you can we can lock a deposit for both and I can block out those days for you and prep the two wigs The deposit will be 200 each for the bridal and then ceremony fast forward we exchange numbers We hop on a call. I send the deposit X Y and Z I'm also sending her like what my bridal shower look is going to be or looks at the time that I thought as well as Ceremony outfit and both reception outfits just to see like these hairstyles that I think I I want for that day Would they go nice with this look like just kind of getting an opinion I kind of do that even with my makeup artist or whatever like what do you think of this outfit you know how girls be talking and chit-chatting so I ended up booking her the flight for Saturday 27 7 a.m. and it was gonna land her here in Chicago keep in mind to um, she's from and this is the thing too y'all you know I was trying to get the best of the best for myself and my special occasion if I'm flying somebody out from a whole nother state covering their flight covering their hotel fee I didn't mind the investment because if I was gonna get the best from somebody to make sure I looked my best on my special days then cool it, to me it was worth it anyway hotel confirmed sent her the screenshots of everything booked her a hotel in downtown Chicago just so she would be close to where I live instead of like I could put her near the airport I could have put her in a little rundown whatever I'm not that type of person she lucky anyway sent her on August 17th the confirmation screenshot pictures of her hotel the flights the check-in the uh, all the information she needed right she never responded back this was at 1 48 p.m i don't feel like y'all are gonna like literally believe how crazy this is next day and i waited till the evening of the next day because i'm like maybe she'll text because sometimes i text people back the next day okay cool but it's not people that is paying me money that already put a down payment or whatever 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 anyway hit her up the next day please confirm you received said nothing cannot make this up the ghetto operations okay didn't say anything, gave her two more days, right? I said on the 20th, so this is Saturday, hey, did you receive my text and confirmation for the flights and hotel? I've followed up a couple times now, received no response, so this would be my last follow-up, otherwise I have to cancel, please let me know. Now, she did hit me up a few hours later. She had had a loss in her family. I don't feel comfortable outing her personal business like that, but she did lose a very close family member, I guess, which is why she wasn't responding to my messages whatsoever. She ended up basically saying it's been very hard for her, haven't been able to do anything, but still plan on coming. Mind you, by that weekend, it was going to be my bridal shower engagement party. So I um, was like, oh my gosh, I'm so incredibly sorry. Are you sure you don't want to cancel altogether? I know it's a lot to process, just let me know. I was gonna be completely understanding if I had to do my hair last minute, I was fine with that. Like death and loss, I, I, 
it hits close to home I definitely understand so I was gonna be completely fine if she wasn't going to be able to follow through with what we originally had planned didn't say anything y'all I hit her up four days later keep in mind this is I think now four days before my bridal shower say hey I'm sorry about what you're going through right now however unfortunately I need confirmation today on if you'll be coming this weekend the 27th through 28th or not otherwise I have to cancel everything require a refund and figure out something else last minute because keep in mind I already gave her the $200 deposit to solidify the dates right and then I also booked the flight and I also booked the hotel already but if I'm not hearing anything from anybody I'm not about to keep the hotel and the flight and just waste my money like that and you need to run me back my refund for the deposit I gave you if you're not able to follow through with your hold up your end of the deal right she said hey I can let you know later I'll give you an answer by tonight I know y'all see this didn't get an answer next day hello I never received an answer last night so I'll need to know by 11 a.m. because and I hit her up at 6 58 a.m. I didn't expect a response by then but I wanted to do it as soon as I woke up because now you playing with me I got two days before we said that you were gonna come and do my hair and three days before my actual bridal shower so either and you guys know even if I was gonna do my natural hair I need 48 hours max for my hair to fully dry so even do like I don't even need to break it down for you guys my naturals know y'all understand anyway never received an answer last night i'll need to know by 11 a.m today at the latest if you're coming or not unfortunately if i don't hear anything by 11 i'll have to cancel the flight hotel and require a refund for my deposit 400 dollars deposit right because i paid her both deposits for the bridal shower engagement party and the wedding day she just said replied i'm coming oh. <sighs> even that simple ass answer just it, it, it radiates heat inside of me because i'm like I can have sympathy and empathy for a situation like this happening, but there still has to be a level of professionalism there of like somebody paid you money to do a service for them. So the least you can do is stay in good communication or even if she would have told me like, hey, she didn't even have to be specific with me. She didn't even really have to tell me that somebody had passed away. She could just say it's been a rough time, but I will get back to you in X amount of time or I will follow up with you. Just some type of communication because now you're playing with my money, you're playing with my time and you're playing with my emotions on a really special time in my life. Anyway, so you say, you see, she just says I'm coming um, and I let her know I'm not going to do the highlights. Originally, I thought I was going to do highlights for my bridal shower, but I was like, no, I want to give a little vibe room for the wedding. So I waited on the highlights for that. And when was this conversation? So this was two days before she was supposed to come here. Then the day she's supposed to arrive, because she never said anything back to that. She never said anything back. The day she hit, uh, she's supposed to come, hit her up. First thing when I wake up, you see 6.18 a.m. I said, good morning, looking forward to seeing you today. Safe travels, and please let me know when you land. She said, good morning, just landed. So I sent her my address or whatever. Then she tells me she's waiting on her bags, um, that she has to make a stop to the beauty supply store. Do you have one near you and an address? I thought that that was really weird because I'm like, you're not coming with everything that you need so that we can get this done. That in itself kind of blew me, but I'm like, all right, maybe she just for happened to forget something because she's in a bad state right now, right? She lost somebody really close to her. I can understand just being forgetful and like your mind being on a thousand things at once. So cool, whatever. Sent her an address to a beauty supply store, yada, yada, yada. Came and did my hair. I actually had a vlog of that, that week, the prep week for my bridal shower. The experience, like actually meeting her in person and stuff was cool. It it was just cool to be talking to another successful black woman, like successful in her industry, successful in her lane. I love to see women, especially black women winning. So just hearing about her different business ventures and plans she was thinking about doing for her brand and XYZ. As we're moving into the next phase of this ghetto operation. Something that uh, when she was here doing my hair for the bridal shower engagement party that we talked about, she was saying like she takes constructive criticism well. If her client or something doesn't like, she wants them to communicate it to her X, Y, and Z. So I decided that I was ready to take off my wig. I felt it starting to like pull on my edges and slide a little bit. And I personally, when I do my own wigs, I pretty much take off my wigs every night, y'all, because of the tension that it has on um, our edges. A lot of women's edges thin out and bald because they allow the tension to continue happening and, and I don't know if they think nothing's happening in the process but it is anyway September 6th I sent her a text right because when it was time to take it off and I got picture receipts for you guys the ghetto operation 
was at an all time high. Granted, when she was doing my hair, there were certain things I'm like, hmm, I don't know, this don't really feel right. Like when she was sewing on, in particular, the back of the wig to make sure it was secure, it was kind of like a really ghetto, like, situation going on like just looping it pulling it through tugging so it's kind of pulling back there in the kitchen area I'm knowing the little beady balls from it being tight start to and I did try to say something she actually I remember I forgot she hopped on a phone call for quite a while when she was doing my hair so when I was trying to tell her like hey this is gonna pull it a little bit she didn't hear me like didn't acknowledge it and I'm like dang I don't want to be rude or you know I just don't try to I don't try to do too much. So I let her have that. I just kind of tugged on it to kind of make sure it didn't completely rip my kitchen out. Anyway, September 6th, hit her up. I say, hope all is well since the last we spoke. I just wanted to give some feedback and follow up on some things with you since the wedding is quickly approaching. First, I absolutely loved how you styled my hair for the bridal shower. It was a hit and turned out beautiful, which it was. It turned out gorgeous. I loved the way I looked. However, I know you said you like and appreciate constructive criticism. So I do want to vocalize a few issues slash concerns I have in order for the wedding experience to align with my expectations. My main problem was honestly the takedown experience. The tracks you glued to the wig cap that was already on my head seeped through and got stuck to my actual hair which is a major problem for me because a massive part of my career is my hair and its health. Is it not? Y'all she glued my and you know what when she was doing it like something in me kind of was like hmm I don't know about this but I don't know I just I think I just gave her the benefit of the doubt like there's no way a professional hairstylist would put my hair in that type of risk because I used to make wigs back in the day there's videos you can check out on my channel and whenever I would make wigs in particular the glue method you always glue the tracks on the mannequin head you never glue it on your actual head well unless you want to fuck your hair up which I never wanted to do so first I'd always put a plastic bag trash bag over the mannequin head because I almost didn't even want to abuse the mannequin head okay then I would put the wig cap over it then I would glue the track without a doubt it would always seep through and when the wig is fully dried and I pull it off of the mannequin head guess what stuck the plastic bag because it got glued. So it's kind of wild I don't know I, maybe I thought she was using some type of special wig cap that like there's just no way she would be gluing tracks to a thin wig cap that would seep through to my hair, but but she did. So I sent her the picture receipts, even a video. I'll make sure I play this video for you guys right here. The, the ghetto operation, I could not make this up, y'all. I cannot make this up. And it genuinely hurt. Like, I could not just pull it out. And I'm like, am I going to have to cut my hair? Like, yeah, so that was the whole thing, sent her the pictures, right? I said, it's very painful to detach and there are still some that remain stuck in my braids at the moment. Additionally, I didn't care for the way the wig was sewn into my hair. It was all over the place and took a long time for my fiance to find the parts that was safe to cut, which was also true because it was the ghetto operation back there. It was no pattern to it. It wasn't, it wasn't neatly done at all. It was just a rush job. I said, like, it's all over the place, took a long time. I also feel like if I'm paying that much money, so I, and I make sure I speak up for myself. I said, I also feel like if I'm paying that much money for a wig and install, it, I should be able to reuse the wig again. But by the time we were able to cut it off, the wig was basically a wrap. Because again, remember she charged me like $1,200 for this whole, the wig, her styling it, and then me getting her flight in her hotel was a whole different price. So this was a pretty pricey experience. And for you to charge me for a wig, I can only wear one time for about a week. So yeah, there's nothing I could really do about what that experience was for me. What was done was done. But all I could do in control was making sure I gave proper feedback so that this bullshit didn't happen again for my wedding day, right? So I proceeded to say, for the wedding day hairstyle, I'd like to go about the install process way different. So one, my hair will be properly protected. And two, I can reuse the wig again if I want. I also wasn't a huge fan of the glue because I don't do glue y'all know I don't do glue I ain't never done glue with my wigs I use free spray like I don't I don't like that. I have my own conspiracies about the glue, but I'll keep that to myself. Anyway, I said, also I wasn't a huge fan of the glue, so if there's another way we can install the wedding wig without glue, that's preferred, because she had did the uh, the stocking cap method, which required a whole bunch of layers of glue just to get the stocking cap, like, and blend that with my skin tone and make it look like fake scalp, and then applied more glue over that to then put the wig on top, right? So it was just a ridiculous amount of glue. So yeah, that process was painful as well, and I'm pretty sure I have pictures of 
of that. I said, not sure if glueless is possible or smart since we obviously don't want the wig falling off during the turn up. I'm talking about my wedding, but I'm pretty set on avoiding glue at all costs. I followed the steps you told me to do when taking it down. She said, put olive oil. Olive oil and a heated blow dryer. Use heated blow dryer and olive oil and it'll loosen the glue and it'll come off. That's what she said. She said, as simple as that. Said, I followed the steps you told me when taking down, but it still hurt and messed up my edges a bit, which is the main reason I never use glue. So please let me know your thoughts on how we can best go about this for the wedding. And then I said, lastly, I'd want the wedding hairstyle to be more fuller and dense, like 180 to 250% density. My hairstylists and wig wearers know what that means because my bridal shower wig it was pretty thin. Like it was pretty like not giving my hair and I wanted something I like full hair I like volume I like volume so I was like I just don't want nothing flat and like skimpy so I made sure to communicate that as well like just so we're on the pa same page I said so if tracks are necessary again they need to already be a part of the wig before applying it to my head I tried a sandwich in college I took this learning difficult conversations course right the professor taught us how to sandwich method when you have to have a difficult conversation with somebody sandwich them so you kind of say something nice you say you you know the nitty gritty part that you need to get off your chest and then you finish off with like something nice so to speak so my final thing was other than that though I'd like to say I was satisfied with my overall experience I just have to be very cautious of how my hair is being handled by others because I've worked so hard all these years to get it to the level of health that it is now so I hope you understand and get where I'm coming from and that's what I left it at you know was another red flag when she came to do my hair and it, it was in the blow dry state I was already washed and blow dry when she got here she was like you must not wear wigs often because your hair is healthy and I remember it kind of catching me off guard, like, so my hair sh shouldn't be healthy or like, and I was like, well, yeah, I do my hair myself. And that is probably the key as to why it's healthy. Anyway, she said that she was going to respond back later. She said she was going to respond back in 10 minutes because she was driving when I sent all this, right? I said, sounds good. Just want to put everything out there, then go from there. Thanks for letting me know. Guess what, y'all? No mother freaking response. No, no, no. So next morning, was this even the next morning or a few days later, bro? Three days later, because I hit her up with that September 6th. Three days later, I said, good morning. Never received a response from my messages the other day, so I'm following up. She didn't say anything back that day. That next day in the afternoon, she tried to call. I picked up, I don't know, there was some type of disconnection, so she just texted me, hello. I said, hey, I answered, dot, dot, dot. She said, you did sound like a voice. Hey, you reached EC May May, blah, blah, blah. So we hop on the phone call, discuss things. I don't even remember what the girl said verbatim, but she kind of, I think she kind of apologized about like the glue thing and just the way the wig was put together. Cause my thing is, I don't want something that just looks good externally. It needs to be an overall well put together experience so yeah anyway she calls i reiterate again yeah no glue for the wedding that ain't my thing reassures me yeah okay cool that all works so then they we're pulling up on the wedding pretty soon here and i need to book her a flight for the wedding now i wasn't going to book her another overnight situation because i just didn't see the point of that i was just like we'll fly you out early the morning of the wedding and then actually you know what's funny on the phone call she had said that she wanted to kind of get to experience the wedding a little bit so could i get her a later flight because at this point she knew that we were going to do traditional white ceremony type of thing and then go into the Nigerian attire and she wanted to see how that was all going to play out blah blah blah. So I sent her some flight option times where she would land here around 9 a.m. and then she would leave from Chicago around 8 p.m. so she could kind of be here the full day. So sent her those time options. She said yeah that's fine. Reconfirmed to make sure all her information was correct. She said yes it's correct. Sent her the confirmation picture that everything is booked. I said your flight is book girly both flights are american airlines all of that stuff right this happened september 10th she didn't say anything back september 14th i sent her a picture of this is actually kind of one of my inspo pictures for my wedding hairstyle anyway i sent her that picture as well as another one and i said i don't want the roots in the front to be blonde definitely want them black just kind of explaining overall what i was wanting and looking for <laughs> guess who didn't say anything until september 20th five days later five days later so now we're about 10 days from my wedding oh and actually the reason i hear from her five days later is because i followed up i said hey just following up never received a response from last week and we have 11 days left so i'm gonna play you guys what was said hey my dear i'm sorry i didn't get back to you um yet 
please do know that I did promise that this weekend the wig would already be uh, styled and everything. So, yes, this Friday I'm working on it. And by Saturday, I should be sending you pictures and videos of what I come up with. So I'm like, okay, cool. You're going to send it Friday. So September 20th was Tuesday. She was saying she was going to work on the wig Friday, send me pictures Saturday. But guess what, you guys? I know y'all probably are already reading this woman's pattern at this point right she told me that she was gonna do the wig friday send pictures saturday guess what happened yes didn't hear from her didn't get the pictures friday nor saturday so guess who had to follow up on sunday to ask what's up now keep in mind now this is five days before my wedding i say hey how's the wig coming along my makeup artist is currently here and we're trying to determine my bridal makeup i thought i'd have the pictures of the wig to show her today because you mentioned you'd send it saturday i understand life be life and things happen though it'd be helpful to see how the wig looks so far to decide the appropriate makeup so please send as soon as possible a few minutes later she responded back and said hey i'm actually working on it as we speak i'm about to go through the first process of bleaching I had so many bookings today I'm also today I started I'm just doing the color first and styling it tomorrow I'll send pictures tomorrow before the day ends so I said cool all right XYZ this was Sunday I can't make this up I have to screenshot this for you guys too didn't get anything Sunday didn't get anything Monday so guess who had to follow up Tuesday your girl I said hey checking on the wig never received the pictures or videos keep in mind y'all this is now three days before my wedding and not only that and I'm almost getting a little bit emotional one because I can tell mother nature is coming but two just to remember the state that I was in at the time because all I'm gonna share is that my whole identity was stolen 72 hours three days before my wedding bank account cleared blocked three days before and this same day I had to hit her up that night asking for where are the pictures, where are the videos. It's just kind of amazing. Honestly, I can't attribute me getting through this whole process other than giving it to God. I gave it to God and I was like, it's in your hands. I need you Lord to guide because I can't make this stuff up. Like it was so much that was happening right at the end. And I'm like, the devil's working overtime for real, for real. And the ghetto operation to add on top of that, like what the, fuck? you know? Anyway, guess who didn't respond to the next day? After I had said this, right? So she responds the next day in the afternoon. Hey, I'm in ATL now for some clients. The BET Awards is this weekend. I seriously will tonight. I will send you pictures. I never did because I have not styled it. And I also packed it in my hair suitcase because I fly back to blank to catch the flight to Chicago. Guess what it didn't happen? It still didn't get the pictures and videos of my wig. Hit her up the next morning. Hey, never received, dot, dot, dot. 9.46 a.m., didn't say anything. 5.08 p.m. same day, that Thursday, because now we have, what, 48 hours before my wedding day. So I was asking, have you heard, this place isn't looking too good hurricane-wise, let me know what you think and how we can make sure that you get here safely because I don't have a backup plan. I didn't have a backup plan if she didn't make it, whether it be because of the weather or because she's just an unprofessional ass hairstylist. She does not hit me up till the next day. Now, granted, it's the next day at 2 a.m. in the morning. So she sends this message while I'm asleep, but she said, I got on the phone with the airline an hour ago. I'm able to fly. The weather won't be too bad to fly out. I'll be fine. On top of that, she said, I'm just getting home, working on the wig, talk to you in a few hours. So that night, that Friday night, the 30th, the day before my wedding, the day before my wedding, she sends me pictures of the wig. And then we hop on a call because it doesn't really look the way I want. The highlights aren't really exactly how I would like. And then on top of that, the wig was already supposed to be styled. That was what was promised to me the week prior, that Friday, Saturday weekend, right? That the wig was gonna be colored and styled. She was gonna send pictures to me for me to confirm if it's good to go or not. We get on a phone call, discuss, discuss. I said I wanted a little bit more highlights added to it. And yeah, that's all I can kind of remember from the phone call. Can't make this up, can't make this up morning of my wedding she texts me at 5 a.m talking about my flight lands at 11 a.m i forgot to tell you about my flight from atl to chicago that was the earliest i could find she switched her flight y'all that's not the flight that i bought her so not only 
Did she not tell me she switched the flight and did not tell me to get a refund for the plane ticket that I did buy from her? She also now pushed her flight back two hours from the flight time that I had picked for her. She was supposed to land here around 8.45, 9 a.m. at the latest to get to Chicago by about 10 a.m. And this is the reason, this is why it's really effed up, right? Because we had our wedding day planned out so that Josh and I would see each other before the actual ceremony, purchase a sprinter van to take us around the city, again, before the ceremony so we could, like, I didn't, we didn't want the whole dramatic first time seeing each other coming down the aisle. Nothing about our wedding was traditional, so we weren't gonna go that traditional route of like, oh, it's bad luck to see the wedding. No, so because of that, ordered a sprinter van, had our photographers and makeup artists and all these people come earlier in the morning to get stuff done so that both me and him would be dressed by noon. But keep in mind, our wedding invitations told people that the wedding was gonna start uh, at three. Our own little circle, me, Josh, and our wedding planner, we knew it was gonna start at 3.30. We know people be on CPT. So it was just like, okay, cool. Her saying that now she wasn't gonna land until 11 a.m instead of her landing at 9 a.m. like the flight I bought her, now pushed the whole shit back more than two hours, to be honest, because again, I was supposed to be dressed, makeup done, hair done, in my dress that actually took about an hour to get into because, you know, my dress was like perfectly formed to my body and the material wasn't stretchy. It's a bridal gown. So I had to account for all this time, which is why I knew she was gonna get here around 10 a.m. And if I need to be dressed by noon, I was like, two hours should be more than enough time. My hair was already braided down. All she had to do was apply the wig and style it a little bit. And when I say a little bit, she was supposed to have styled it prior, but guess what wasn't styled when she came? And then she also canceled her flight. Well, she didn't cancel it. She just didn't take the flight, made her own flight. And then the flight landed her here two hours later than what the one I bought for her. Not only that, oh, I feel my blood pressure getting up there. Let me calm down. <sighs> Could y'all imagine this is the first thing I saw the morning that I woke up from my wedding. I think I woke up around 6 a.m. or something. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting married today. Check my phone to see the time. See that the hairstylist texts me and she just told me she changed her flight to an entirely late time. So immediately tell my wedding planner, like, I don't know what we're gonna do. She's not gonna be here on time. Anyway, but first I respond, I say, that's not good. I'm supposed to be done by noon with my hair and makeup. Your dang near won't make it here till noon. We have a set itinerary for the day, so that throws off a lot. So she had said earlier, right, she was supposed to land at 11 a.m. Why do I get a text at 11.50 a.m. saying, I'm here calling my Uber on my way to you now? So did you land at 11 or not? I'm thinking by 11.50, she's going to be knocking on my door because hello, I'm here, not I'm calling my Uber and I'm about to head your way. Y'all could not make this up. Got here around 1 p.m. Our wedding was supposed to start at three and the wig wasn't even on my damn head yet. Insane, insanity. Right? So basically, long story short, my wedding planner had communication with her from that point forward and got in her ass. Got in her ass, even to the point where a, a, a inkling of me, cause it was one point, um, cause she was taking so long by the time she got to us and she was putting on the wig, it was, she was telling my wedding planner like, this is only gonna take 30 minutes, 45 minutes passes. Uh, my wedding planner's like, okay, what's going on? Cause you know, the um, photographers and videographers are there. I didn't even get to do, <laughs> And it makes me like really sad. This part makes me sad because there were so many things planned out for that day. So me and Josh, we had bought the Sprinter van because we were gonna go around the city to get like Chicago in the background of our wedding pictures. The venue was not in, it was in the city, but it wasn't. And the exterior part of our venue is not aesthetic whatsoever. So it's like, if we're gonna do city shots and I knew I wasn't gonna be doing my make, getting my hair and makeup and all that stuff done for a whole nother day. Like wedding day is wedding day. So that's why we were gonna do that and bought the van and everything, which also was not cheap. Every, every aspect of the wedding wasn't cheap. And her making this selfish ass decision without even communicating it with me till the morning of my wedding effed up everything. So this, this is the part where like, 
again, there was an inkling of me that kind of felt bad when my wedding planner was going in on her in front of people, but the other part was like, no, nah, this is on you. you. You made this bed, you lie in it. But it didn't really even matter how much she was kind of bawling her out and going in on her because what's done was done. The time was delayed, everything was kind of messed up. My girls that got dressed with me that morning, I bought them all robes, green robes, to kind of go with the Nigerian Independence Day theme. I had my white one on. My girls and my mom, we were supposed to get those shots, you know, the shots that brides get to do, like, <sighs> it's okay, it's okay. It makes me a little bit emotional because this was like one of the most important days of my life ever and it just did not go the way I wanted or planned at all because of this. So by the time she finished doing my wig, I think it was about almost 2, 2.15. Keep in mind, this wedding is at three o'clock. It's supposed to be. And we were even supposed to show up. The plan was for us to do the city shots and then get to the venue at least a half an hour before everybody else, just so we're just chilling there. Like we're just sitting there, waiting for people to funnel in and for the ceremony to start. Literally, I, I kid you not, my whole day was like this because of this shit. We also bought the Sprinter van because my dress was so big, there was no car or any other form of transportation that would have worked to transport me in my dress to the city shots and X, Y, and Z. Guess who didn't even get in the Sprinter van in her dress? Me, because we didn't have time. I had to get dressed at the venue. So I didn't get the bridal prep shots with my mom, with my girls. We didn't get any of those professional shots. There was a few of me like just individually in my um, bridal robe. As soon as I got my hair done, cause it's like, no, nah, we gotta get something for the bride. I, I wouldn't have had anything, anything. And then guess actually who else rode in the Sprinter van with me? It was me, her, and my wedding planner. That's it. The most awkward 15, 20 minutes of my life. Cause it's just like, this is your fault. And I don't even know if she really, really, took in the fact that you really effed up somebody's wedding day. What happens next is even wilder. So get to the wedding venue, have to rush to get my dress on, the photographer, it was just chaos, pure chaos. The photographers and videographers, as soon as I get my dress on, are like trying to get those shots of me before it's time to start. But then my wedding planner is kicking my mom and everybody else out because it's like, well, the wedding is starting, y'all gotta be out there. It was just a lot and I just remember feeling so anxious and so so overwhelmed and as soon pretty much as soon as my dress was on me they put the veil on me put the bouquet in my hands and they're like all right let's go there was not even a breath that I got to take y'all before they were like all right it's time for you to walk out again this is something else that I can't really attribute it to anything but God's presence I really do mm. God's presence and my dad's presence I think that that's why I was able to to get through this Cause like me and Josh wanted to see each other before the actual ceremony because we're best friends one and we come like we're each other's home. You know, when your person's your home and that there's a comfort there. I didn't get any of that <laughs> that day. The first time we got to see each other was me coming down the aisle. And when the wedding stuff all comes out, y'all are able to see the whole experience. You'll see, I didn't, I didn't stop looking at him. I didn't look at the crowd. I did not acknowledge anybody. I literally stared at my husband <laughs> the whole time because I, I just was like, it was such a kind of an out of body experience. None of it went as planned. Whole wedding was delayed. Oh, I, I didn't give you guys a time of when we actually made it out there. I don't think I started walking down the aisle until almost 4.35 o'clock. But yeah, um, I, I really do attribute me getting through it, honestly, as flawlessly as I did. I was a pretty flawless ass bride if I can't toot my own horn. From my identity being stolen to this hairstylist in the ghetto operations, people had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. Like, you would never know if I wasn't communicating that all these things were happening. But yeah, God, God and my dad, I'm positive, was there with me to give me strength to get through the madness of that day. Once the curtains revealed and I walked down the aisle and stuff, like I was with Josh and I was I was cool. It's kind of like I'm at peace again. But the rest of the day was just a rush, to be honest, because the cocktail hour was supposed to be at like four o'clock. Reception's supposed to start at five o'clock. But again, if I'm telling you, I didn't even make it down the aisle until around 4.35, everything got pushed back and the venue didn't care. We had to be out of there, I think by 11 p.m. or noon at the latest. So we had to rush the first dance. We had to rush the garter toss. We had to rush the bouquet toss. It was just a rushed experience because of this, this ghetto, operation literally i can't give it as much weight to say it ruined my wedding day but it fucked some shit up 
It did. It did. And you know what's crazy too? Out of embarrassment, she didn't stay. So I even had bought there that her that flight for her to like leave at 8 p.m. So she could kind of expand. She knew better than that. She didn't stay. As soon as she had come to the venue with us and touched up my hair after I was in my dress, she dipped with the quickness, as she should. So guess what? Guess what? The day after my wedding, can't make this up. I'll screenshot and send it to you guys. Day after my wedding, almost at 1 p.m., sends me a text. Good afternoon, EC. I'm hoping you had a fantastic night last night. Sending love and blessings to you and Josh. I almost made me want to stick up my middle finger. Also, my sincerest apology for my timing and how it may have affected you. As for the payment, if you can please sell it to the phone number, or if you can, by Apple Pay, the balance is $1,000. She wanted to still charge me full price, y'all. Full price. It can't get much ghetto than this. It can't get much ghetto than this you essentially ruin somebody's wedding day at least the timeline and you're still going to charge them full price for this ghetto ass experience it the people it, the, people blow my mind every day it amazes me it amazes me anyway i had sent the screenshot to my wedding planner my wedding planner was like mm -mm, i'm gonna handle this and I, i'm gonna get on a call with her so whatever that call was her next text to me was so sorry about everything and in every way i was an inconvenience to you i'm really disappointed in myself for causing you this i hope you can see i'm sincere about it as for the balance 750 is fine it's not fair that i wasn't on time 750 you took off 25%. Ah! <sighs> anyway, didn't say anything back. I, I was the ghost now, right? I was like, mm. and this is the day after my wedding. Have some fucking decency. For real, for real, you, I just think the nerve. I thought if it was me, if Rose were reversed and I had effed up somebody's wedding day, I would have been, I would have taken that L. I'm like, I am so sorry that I I would have just tried to accommodate in any way like I took the L you don't even have to pay me nothing because fucked up the accountability was like nowhere in the day after my wedding you anyway so she uh is saying good morning can you can I please get a response from you I sent it to my wedding planner again so we end up getting on a three-way call and I'm kind of just listening to them go back and forth my wedding planner's like no you cannot try to charge somebody this much money and you mess up their wedding day our wedding planner really rolled for us that's why I love Kia so much so after this phone call she ends up hitting me up around one like hello please don't forget to send the money this is day two of me being married. I just said I won't. And I sent her a screenshot of the 450. Oh yeah, that's what was decided on the phone. She was like, okay, well we can do 450, but I do need to be compensated for something. Like I can't just blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Cool. You brought the wig. You actually did your job. Like you did something, although you did it very distastefully, very unprofessional. It was a full ghetto operation. Cool have your little whatever but i certainly wasn't gonna pay you full price for the bullshit so i sent her a screenshot of the 450 and then was done with her with that but i am pretty positive that when it was time for me to take off my wig yep yep she did it again and i took pictures and receipts because i was like judy gang is not gonna believe how ghetto this experience was unless i really have receipts for them to see that she really was a trash ass stylist. And get this, you guys, not only did she rinky dink the uh, sewing job in the back again, the same way she did for my bridal shower engagement party hairstyle, also, she applied glue again. She applied the glue again. After I stressed, I stressed, I did not want that, and that it was a bad experience for me. I, I, I can't I can't believe this situation to be honest the circumstance of the situation I don't even think I said anything back to her about that part I was so done talking to this girl there was no point of me even following up like hey you messed up the sewing part again or you still applied the glue after I damn near begged you let's do something else anything but glue you still did it i don't even tell y'all about like the actual experience of her being here and doing my hair because she forgot this she had to use my makeup artist foundation brush and foundation i believe to match my complexion and just it was ghetto 
it was ghetto. It was ghetto. Like, I think that this most definitely tops the other ghetto operation of that hairstylist for my birthday two years ago. She topped her. She topped her. And I didn't even think that could be top, but she topped her, crowned her, because I have never had such an unprofessional ass experience in my life. And for it to be for such an important occasion in my life, I just was like, okay, the devil's working, he's working. But I digress, you guys. This video has gone entirely too long. I, 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 I'm a bit speechless still to this day about the situation and just like how hairstylists do people, do their clients, do their paying customers, the people that help keep them in business. And of course, me being me, I, I don't know if people understand how intentional I am about this, but our wedding planner was black, our photographers was black, our videographers were black, the makeup artist was black, my ceremony dress, black woman, my reception dresses, Nigerian black women. So when I say, I really put my black dollars into black businesses. I'm not joking about that. The hairstylist was obviously black, but I just, I'm embarrassed for even uh, using her. Like I, I could not put her information out there because I also didn't want any of you guys to be like, oh, like, cause obviously the style came out fly, but under that rug is hideous. In that closet, it's, it's like, oh my God. I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go through a situation like this. So I could not. I could not promote or endorse this type of business. I, I, I couldn't do it. And it, it hurts me because I, I'm adamant about that. It's a passion of mine almost to put not only my black dollars into black businesses, but also put other people on to black businesses, to black experiences, to black services. Like I'm all about that. So to have an experience like this, it kind of, it's almost, it almost feels like a slap in the face a little bit because it's like, dang, I, be, I was riding for you. I was trying to sit beside you even after the bridal shower engagement party experience. Like, I feel like most people, her gluing my hair, she put glue in my hair. And then also the ghetto operation of the sew job. And I still was like, you know what? Let me give her the benefit of the doubt and the constructive credit. If she would have got it right for this wedding, this video would have never even been made. Y'all wouldn't even have known. That is how I try to move and operate because I believe in giving people second chances and not, especially when it comes to black businesses, bashing a black business, putting them out there, X, Y, and Z. But you know what? I think it, it, it's important to also speak up though. I don't believe in supporting black businesses to the point of it being detrimental for somebody else, another client, another customer. I'm honestly still flabbergasted by the entire situation. I'm sure you guys can kind of tell by the emotions in this video. I, so, honestly, that is all I have for you guys. Can I say I hope y'all enjoyed the video? I mean, I do hope you enjoyed it. Live vicariously through my bullshit <laughs> at that time. If you have any ghetto operation hair stories that you want to share, please don't hesitate to comment it below. I know there are people out there that share my pain um, and my experience, and it's just it's just sad and it's disappointing. It really is, cause I, honestly, hair is such a huge aspect of the black culture. It's such a part to me of us as black people, black women, our self expression, cause there's so many different things we can do with our hair, and it's it's such a booming ass industry because of it all. So to have people that are in the industry that are professionals in the industry that don't have their clients and customers best interest at heart and truly give care to their craft. Cause her just using glue the first time and the second time after I asked not to, you're just being lazy at this point and disrespectful. The way she sold it in my hair, lazy, disrespectful. After this experience, I'm like, oh, this is why when she saw my hair before she started braiding it down, she said, mm, do you wear wigs often? Cause your hair is healthy. Cause if that's how you're doing your client's hair, no wonder they're bald head. No wonder. It's a wonder. It's a wonder how hairstylists are still making money, but it won't change until we start speaking up, one, as clients and customers, and then two, also just not accepting the bare minimum. And this is why I also think it's important to learn how to do your own hair. I learned how to do my own wigs. It was a rough process, especially in the beginning. It's some wigs and styles and stuff I'm embarrassed of, but guess what, guess who still has their edges? Guess who still has the health, okay? 
because I take care of my hair underneath. That's the most important part. What, what, what? <sighs> yeah, that's all I got actually, because I that could be a whole nother tangent. I might have to do another late night event session on just the ghetto unprofessionalism of hairstyling. This, 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 this era that we're in because i feel like this has been going on for a while but more recently this generation and the hairstylists that just think they're the shit and you know she was somebody who does professional celebrities was at the bt award so i feel like she's smelling her she smells herself she thinks she's the shit the roses really smell like mm -mm -mm. but that's all i got for y'all i'm 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 over it I really want to just like after this video is out I just want to let go of all this bad and negative energy I don't want to really even talk about it anymore because it really worked me up even just explaining the story over to you guys again but anyway I hope y'all enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to comment below your thoughts feelings opinions experiences that you may have had because you know beauty game we're a community <laughs> we, we ride together we go through things together so yeah um, other than that love y'all lots talk to you soon your girl's out.